Yo, what is good dev guys? Welcome back. In this video, I want to fix the bug where we are not able to completely replicate the direction of the, the muzzle flashes and things to the other clients you see here. This is, you, uh, you're looking at me, this red guy moving right here on another client screen. And when I shoot my gun, you can see the animation is replicated, but the, the weapon, the effects, like the, the tracer, the muzzle flash, none of that stuff is being replicated. So we're gonna fix that in this video. So I'm going to exit this. Let me uh, just uh, jump over here. Stop playing editor. Let's go back to a smaller screen here. And then I wanna open up this B weapon file. If you don't know where it is, it's inside of content weapons and then the b underscore weapon blueprint so here we're passing it the first person mesh and it's taking the first person mesh as a location to spawn the weapon fire it also takes this skeletal mesh to spawn or to attach the impacts and things like that as well so we actually want to decide whether or not to use either the first person mesh or the third person mesh based on whether or not the owner of this is the server or the client. So in order to do that, first I'm gonna disconnect this. I'm actually gonna delete this, we don't need it. We need to create our own function inside of here. We can easily do this in Blueprint. This is something you can do inside of C++ as well. So we're gonna call this get proper mesh. And all I did was hit this plus sign here and it gave me a uh, an option to override this function. Not override, but to write the name of this function here. Uh, we're going to make this pure and we're going to make it const. This is the same thing I would do inside. This is the same thing as making a blueprint pure function that returns a const uh, uh, return value. So making it pure and const, make sure it's, it's taken up as little memory as possible when being used. So we actually want this to output a skeletal mesh component. So I'm going to call this and we want to just make sure that you guys it'll probably default to a Boolean, but skeletal mesh component is what we're looking for and we want an object reference of that i'm just going to call this mesh and what we want to do is decide what this mesh is based on the boolean so i'm going to run a select here and this will allow me to run this based off of a, a, a wild card here and what i'm going to do and the reason that i want to do this in a separate video is because i want to kind of show you guys how to do this in blueprint but as well show you guys that if you're programming in Blueprint, you're basically programming in C++ and some people can't connect the two things together. So I'm going to show you how to do this function in Blueprint and then I'm going to show you how to do it in C++. Uh, so like I said, this video is to teach you guys how to fish. Uh, it's way more important than, you know, just showing you guys everything. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and say we want the weapon mesh uh, first person. And we want the weapon mesh third person and depending on whether or not the owner so i want to get the owner of this rifle because this rifle gets equipped to an actor and that actor becomes its owner but it's also equipped on the server as well so there's a server version of this rifle as well as a, as a client side version of this rifle so we want to get the owner and we want to cast it to a pawn cast to pawn and here we want to do a pure cast because we know that the only thing that can really own this weapon right now, unless you guys do like a like a looting system where the owner of the rifle is at first a bin or something like a loot bin. And then you give it the ownership to the client or to the pawn. But for right now, the only thing that will own this rifle is a pawn. So this is fine to do. And what we want to do is check if this guy is locally controlled. And that means that it's the client side version. That's basically what it is. And this is the Boolean that we want to pass into this select here. And if it's true, we want to use a first person mesh. If it's false, we want to use the third person mesh. Now, the reason that you would want to do this in C++, let me compile this. The, the reason that you would want to do this in C++ is because this is a function call. This is a function call. And this is a function call. This is also a function call. These are all virtual function calls right here. And it'll just make the processing a little bit faster if you were to do this in C++ because we can bypass this, so especially these two, since we know the root of these two are two components that I just wrapped into a getter function, we wouldn't have to do this right here. So uh, let's show this working in Blueprint first. Uh, so. Go back to the event graph, let's double click there. 
And here where we spawn the B weapon fire, let's drag our function, get proper mesh, and then pass that into the skeletal mesh component uh, exposed pin here. And we also, let's just, wherever we see this skeletal mesh, let's just put this here as well, because what's happening is um, that we're using that mesh as a reference. And I also want to delete this out of here and get rid of it. So let's just look for references of this guy, find references. And wherever there is a get skeletal mesh, we want to actually get the proper mesh. So let's go. We might have some bugs with this, but we'll see how it goes. Go to the next one that could be deleted. As a matter of fact, let me make sure we delete all of them that we replace. Let's delete this. You see here, this is getting the the first person weapon uh, weapon mesh, but we want to actually get the proper mesh for this as well. So I'm going to replace this with that. And both since these are both using the same skeletal mesh, they both have the same socket location. But depending on which mesh we're actually using, we want to use the correct you know, location of that socket. So keep on going. We got another skeletal mesh that we're just going to get the proper mesh and delete this puppy and add fake projectile data. Let's do that and replace this one with get proper mesh. So here we can compile that. Now, if we go ahead and play, I'm gonna go full screen by hitting F11, Alt P to start playing. And this is uh, what you guys are seeing is the, uh, the second client or the first client. And then I'm over here on the second client. I'm gonna walk in front of this guy and I'm gonna fire, you can see. Now we see the tracers, we see the muzzle flash, we'll see the impacts as well. All that stuff is now being replicated properly so that the clients see the VFX as well as the server is seeing the VFX. So basically everyone is able to see what's going on. And you can even optimize this. There is a function that's called uh, is locally viewed and that won't allow uh, a VFX to replicate unless there is a local client looking at it. So uh, just look further into that. That's something that you might want to look more into for your own project. If you can run to any optimization problems, let me uh, reduce the size of this. Stop this puppy. And now let's go to C++ and show you guys how to create that same function inside of C++. So I am going to, oh, is this the right? It's not the right project. Yeah, that's something else I was doing. Let me close that. Uh, so we want to come over to where we have our weapon. Let's go to the weapon base.h and I am going to do a force in line skeletal mesh just like now. Actually, no, we can't make it force in line. Um, I think we probably can, but I don't want to I don't want to do that right now. I don't want to test it and it breaks. So let's just copy this. I'm going to copy the whole thing and just delete what I don't need. And here this actually could be a protective function because uh, we don't actually need to do this anywhere else but inside of the weapon and inside of child versions of the weapon so uh, let's call this get proper i'm gonna call this get proper weapon mesh so we can know that there's a different one get proper weapon mesh and it's going to be const and we're going to remove that and we can say Get rid of this force in line. Let's implement this. So we basically in this function, what we did was we wanted to check and see if our pawn was locally controlled. If it was our skeletal mesh was the first person mesh. If not, it was the third person mesh. So let's get an access to a pawn using our get owner, which is a cast basically. So once we get that pawn owner, what I want to do is return based on whether or not this pawn owner is locally controlled. Uh, so if that's locally controlled, we want to use the first person mesh. So we say weapon mesh 1P. If that is false, we want to say weapon mesh 3P. And I see I typed something wrong here. This is supposed to be a question mark. So this is basically that select node. So if we go back to this going to this function here. This select node is this line of code right here. This is basically a select node. So we're in the line there and we make this a const cast. This is making it a pure cast pretty much. 
And basically we got exactly the code that we have here with two lines of code here. Um, this is why I prefer C++. Like this is so much cleaner. I know what this line does. I know what this line does. I don't have to follow. Well, I made this pretty simple in Blueprint as well, but you know, it is a pretty simple function to kind of, to get this thing across, to show you how easy it is for Blueprint programmers to convert over to C++ because you're basically using C++ just a different way. Uh, the one thing that I was saying is that we're saving on these calls because you got to think Blueprint is a layer in front of C++. So when you call to a Blueprint function, you got to call to the layer and then that layer calls to a C++ function. But we would save on that layer call because we're just getting it. We're just getting that hard metal uh, variable right there. So and then we're also um, going ahead and calling the the C++ function directly inside of C++, which also saves as well. So um, I think that's pretty much all I want to cover in this video. Let's test and make sure that this works just as well as the other one. Uh, let me recompile real quick. OK, so that compiled with no errors. We had a couple of warnings. So I'll probably fix those in the video upcoming. Um, but let's go ahead and navigate to that uh, blueprint that we just had open. And let's um, replace this get proper mesh function with our get proper weapon mesh function. Ooh, Jesus. OK, so I'm going to plug this puppy in there. And I am going to right click and find references for this. And what we're going to do is pretty much do the same thing we did with the skeletal mesh, but instead with this puppy. So let's uh, get proper weapon mesh. And I am going to put this into my copy buffer so that I'll have it. Delete, delete that puppy. And let's just paste this here. Pass that in. Delete it. And you know how to just rinse, repeat it. You feel me? Plug this puppy in. Delete. We get to that last one, go ahead, paste, plug it in and delete. And let's make sure that this all works properly before we uh, end this video. Let's go ahead and press play here. I'll go full screen after this finishes doing its thing. I don't like that you can't go full screen right off the bat. Hold on. So we're full screen here. Let me go back to my, let me go back to my other screen. So if I walk in front of our client here and you see I'm the red guy, our the effects are still being replicated. Let's see if we replicate the uh, the uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my screen, but trying to control the other guy, which is OK. So the impacts are being replicated as well. Uh, if I sh I think if I shoot this guy, the impacts on his head. Can I shoot this guy? Can I do it? OK, I'm looking at him. There we go. Is that all that is being replicated the hit impacts and all that stuff so uh that was kind of like a short lesson to show you guys how easy it is to to go ahead and convert blueprint or really to show you how easy it is to understand that blueprint is basically c plus plus with a, a visual wrapper around it um, so in the next video we're going to get started with our slide so if you guys are ready for that i'll see you in the next video peace